take a large spike and work up one end and flip it out of the way. To make it more manageable, just hit it a couple times with a sledgehammer and then that'll break it up into pieces that are easy to move around and you won't be hurting yourself trying to lift the one big chunk up. You can also weigh those chunks if you want to get a better idea on the volume you're replacing. So let's go ahead and we'll start building this up with gravel, tying in some pieces of rod and then putting our form in so we can start laying in the new concrete. Now with a half inch masonry drill bed and my rotary hammer drill, I'll drill three holes. Now the angle I'm drilling these holes is I want them to crisscross so I can easily tie the three pieces of the rod together, get them sunk into the existing concrete pad. And again, now you'll see how they're crisscrossing and that's where those angles came into play. So three pieces, we'll use two small wire ties, tie those together. And then I probably should have put the aggregate in first and then it would have made it much easier to compact this down. The rock's a little large. It is nice to have a mix of three quarter inch rock down to fines and that just makes it easier to compact. But I did wet down the area first and also apply that white adhesive to the jagged concrete slab with the rod coming out of it. That is the side that we want this new concrete to bond to and then we're gonna have a expansion joint at that curved side to give it a little bit of flexibility in the future so it can move independently. Then I'll take the magnesium float and start working it around and strike things off referencing the surface of the existing concrete and then also that outside form which was set exactly level to the adjacent concrete. You'll start to see the cream or the moisture coming off the top because I did want to work this edge near the form but also I wanted to set that edge on the curve there, that radius curve because I do not want this new patch to necessarily be attached to that existing side. I want there to be some movement there. Now for the finish, all I did was just use that big sponge and just suck up some of the moisture off the top. That gives it a rough finish and I was just trying to match the rough finish on the surrounding slabs. Now I'm going to wait about three days before I'd be driving on this concrete. Remember the curing process is critical and the full curing process actually takes 28 days. It takes 28 days for this to reach the 5000 psi if it cures properly. Now depending on the temperature and how dry it is outside you are going to need to spray a light mist over this concrete wetting it down at least once every day for the first five to seven days. You do not want this to dry too fast because that could lead to some shrinkage and cracks in your concrete and it will not even come close to the 5,000 psi that it could deliver if it cures properly over the 28 days.